This jar is full of pure water. Water is everywhere. We drink it, we swim in it, we pee it. And this is a wet tablecloth. This is a battery next to the water. And batteries have electricity, by the way. And when you put electricity in water, a chemical reaction occurs. This reaction is called ele electrolysis. Um, yeah, thanks. Anyways, I once did a science fair project about this in 8th grade. And basically what you're seeing is the, the process, process of using electricity to decompose water into oxygen and hydrogen gas. Yep, okay. Now this reaction is happening super slowly, but if you add an electrolyte to the water, such as baking soda, it works so much better. And what's great about using baking soda is that once it's completely dissolved in the water, the water turns 100% transparent again. So watch as I drop the battery in, and you can see that immediately as it goes underwater, bubbles start collecting and rising to the surface much quicker than before. And to show you exactly how much faster it's reacting, I'll put a black cloth behind it so you can see some contrast. And the bubbles collecting on the negative side are hydrogen, and on the positive side they're oxygen. And at the end of this video, I'm going to collect a cup of hydrogen and put a lighter to it. Now, I thought I'd scale this experiment up a bit, so I grabbed a much larger container, which should hold about 12 cups of water, a ton of baking soda, and not two, not three, but ten 9 volt batteries. And 9 volt batteries have this really nice snapping feature, which allows you to connect as many 9 volt batteries as you want. And altogether, this massive battery will have 90 volts of electricity, which is enough to give you a painful shock. The materials I'll be using for this experiment are two rubber bands, two 9mm audio adapters, which should do the job just fine, and two cups with weights glued to the bottom to collect the hydrogen and oxygen. And the point of the rubber bands is to connect the wire to the battery by strapping the wire down to the battery using the rubber band. Then I filled the tub with water, and let me just say, it is impossible not to spill. After that, I summoned my magic wand, then added the baking soda, which turned out to be more than a cup. After that, I stirred, and stirred, and stirred, until finally the baking soda dissolved into the water. Then I brought over the 90 volt battery and attached the adapters using the rubber bands. And I probably should have worn gloves because I actually did shock myself like three or four times. So now I submerge the cups underwater, making sure to put the cup with the smaller weight on the right where the oxygen will be, and the cup with the larger weight on the left where the hydrogen will be, since there will be twice as much hydrogen as oxygen. And also making sure to get every air bubble out. Now I put the negative wire under the left cup, which doesn't do anything yet. The chemical reaction will only start once the right wire, which is the positive wire, touches the water. So now after I put the positive wire under the second cup, the bubbles start coming up. And as you can see, I had to upgrade the weights on the top because the previous ones were totally not working. Now watch as the gas bubbles grow in the cups during this 30 minute time lapse. And like three times in a row, I came back into the room to see the cups completely tipped over. And this was why. So after upgrading the weights yet again, it took over four hours to fill the hydrogen cup. And since batteries degrade over time, by the end it was going pretty slow. Then I pulled out the oxygen cup and I just let that spill out into the air because who needs oxygen anyways? <laughs> Then I pulled out the hydrogen cup, and since hydrogen is lighter than air, it floats to the top of the container, making it really easy to store. But then I got thinking, I wonder if there's a better source of power than a massive homemade battery. And my 8th grade science fair project clearly states, well, maybe not so clearly, but it states that if I were to do this project again, I would find a more reliable source of electricity than 9 volt batteries. So I thought and thought, and then inspiration struck. But, in order to prevent any little kids from getting dangerous ideas, I'll just tell you that this source of power is located somewhere in this photo. Do not try this at home. 
so I grabbed a spare plug and connected copper wire to both prongs. After putting the cover back on, the plug was done. So the wires ran down from this power source into a glass jar where the ends were exposed. And the black wire will produce the hydrogen while the white wire produces the oxygen. And this time I decided to put both wires in beforehand and just start the reaction using the plug. So after putting in the baking soda and mixing it around, it was ready to go. And I decided to use tape this time instead of putting a weight on top of the cups because I totally underestimated the buoyancy of hydrogen and oxygen. And this way the hydrogen could still push the cup up but without tipping it over. So now after inserting the white wire, it was completely ready to go. Now just watch what happens when I plug it in. And also listen to how progressively loud it gets as it goes. And I had to stop it right here because it started sparking. So it would have taken this guy 40 hours to fill a cup, took this one 4 hours, and the one we just did took less than a minute. And look at how blue the water got. Check out this time lapse that shows how much it changes color. And I think it's because the copper is reacting with the water, similar to how the Statue of Liberty turns the same color when it rains. And there's so much energy involved that the water is actually super hot. I actually burned my hand in this clip because it was so hot. And I'm lucky the tape held up because the adhesive on one of the pieces was completely melted. So I carefully lifted the cup out making sure to not lose any hydrogen. And after doing a couple tests with fire I found that a lighter works way better than a match. So here it is. And here's another shot. And one more in extra slow-mo because I think it's super cool. And that concludes the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching it, make sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Also make sure to check out my other videos as well.